So let's start with some book reviews going up the stack. These are actually real books that I put together for a prop. Some of them I have not read, so I won't review these. Let's start with the Columbia Encyclopedia. I have not read the entire thing, but very comprehensive. Awesome thing to use as footrest. Also makes a great weight if you're interested in, you know, pumping those arms. Middle East, another book that is extremely exhaustive in the amount of knowledge it contains. I can only uh, claim to have read a couple of chapters, which is bad because my mom paid like $40 for it at Costco. This is King Arthur and His Knights, favorite book from when I was five all the way to 10, I think. I have pretty much read every tale in there over and over again. Now I'm a little less into the whole knights and chainmail scene, but I still am interested. Ooh, these are all Spanish language books right here, so can't test to quality. Treasury of Literature for Children, one of my favorite books of poetry. It's just a really awesome resource that has all kinds of stories, all kinds of poems, basically how I got exposed to authors from an early age. Scholastic Children's Dictionary, a little bit juvenile. I would say use it maybe up until you're 10 years old, and then you can handle the grown-up stuff. Children's... 20th century children's book treasury. Well, guess what? It's the 21st century, so this is outdated. No, not really. I was born in 1997, so I still love that. Children's Garden, the Child's Garden of Delights. I found the stories in here to be a little bit moralistic, so avoid it unless you wanted to have like really kind, goody two shoes children, which I guess would be fine. Colossal Book of Dinosaurs. Personally, I think we have way too many people who are way too obsessed with dinosaurs already, so I'm going to boycott dinosaurs at my house. I don't care how cool T-Rex is. I'm not going to have a little boy who's going to like run around like Calvin at the museum looking for the dinosaur skeletons. Come on, can't we raise well-rounded children who don't just care about ancient animals that have died out? Okay, sorry. That was my little rant about dinosaurs. Back to the calm book review. The language book. I have no idea what is in there. Greek mythology. Ah, oh, yes, Greek mythology. This is a... I'm not going to say Bible of Greek mythology because that would maybe be controversial, but this is an excellent resource on Greek mythology. David Copperfield, this is actually an abridged edition, but quite honestly, it is the only way I would ever be able to read David Copperfield or much of Dickens for that matter. So, you know, D Dickens wrote his stuff, he made money by the word, so it's no surprise that he wrote like sentences that were this freaking long. So, yeah, I admit, I should probably read the real David Copperfield, but I don't want to wade through like 500 pages of exposition. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Shouldn't diss Dickens quite so much. Heath Mathematics. Uh, that was my math textbook for a really long time. I have no... I think I have mostly negative memories of math from that time period, so I think my view of that would be a bit biased. Right on track. The right on track books are pretty good. Uh, it can be a little basic, though, if you're a pretty good writer already. Mark Twain Selected Works. Don't like Tom Sawyer, don't like Huckleberry Finn, Prince and the Pauper is fine, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court is really interesting, I don't remember much of it. I really like The Mysterious Stranger and his memoirs of working on the Mississippi River and over on this other side, let's see if I can get it done quickly, see how clever I am, I took the Middle East's $40 book cover and put it underneath, that's not a real book right there. This, The Atlas of Shipwrecks and Treasures, however, totally is. Interesting stuff, a little bit exhaustive as well though. Our Times, really nice, it's like an encyclopedia of the 20th century with all kinds of detailed stuff about people and places and things. Poetry, ah, this is like my bible of poetry. I'm stroking it because I have such good memories associated with it. Disturbing, right? The, I remember some of my favorite poems coming out of there. I read Annabelle Lee, Edgar Allan Poe. I read The Highwayman, I forget who that was by, and I realized only later that it was actually really violent because the highwayman goes out and shoots himself after after his girlfriend shoots herself. I mean, seriously, great messages for young children going on there. But it's the Revolutionary War, so that makes everything more understandable. This is Douglas Adams. He wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's followed by all the sequels. Tell the truth, I got this as a Christmas present, and I never read it. So I really need to probably catch up on that. But now that it's in this beautiful stack, I would feel so bad about pulling it out. Ah, oh, literature. This is a really good collection, actually. The only downside of this one is if you're one of the people who really don't like the, the really thin, thin pages, you know, like in um, a Bible, how thin the pages would be, the, the text is almost transparent, that book is like that. Really good collection of Les Miserables, and Les Miserables. My French sucks and I'm in second year already. This is a really good book. I'm being so general, aren't I? I have not read this. 
I read like two to three books a day, but I don't read two to three books like this a day. Peter Ackroyd, Albion. Now, if people ask me, what did your parents do to make you so smart and stuff? Well, for one thing, I'd say I'm not that smart, but two, my dad read this book to me, which is a nonfiction book about the history of British literature when I was seven. So that definitely helps. It makes me a little more relatable to say that I didn't understand a single word of it, though. America, The Last Best Hope. William Bennett is like a super conservative dude, and so this book is really biased in a lot of ways. As in, I was reading the actually earlier volume, and it was talking about how the founder of Planned Parenthood was racist and all this other stuff. So, yeah, I would it, interesting read, but always make sure that you're aware of conservative biases. The Norton Anthology of Poetry, really nice. I have the even thicker version now, the complete Norton Anthology of Poetry, sixth edition. This is the shorter fourth. It still has an exhaustive amount of medieval poetry, though. Personally, my opinion about some of the earlier poems in here, they're in there only because they're really old and they're better than their equivalents. And these are uh, books from Education Without Borders, The Book of Virtues, another William Bennett one. It's another one of those books that has a lot of moralistic stories for children that you'll only give to your kids if you want them to be really boring goody two-shoe individuals who will never lie, steal, or cheat. Oh, wait a second. Okay, you might want kids like that. Two more Spanish books, and that looks like I've cleaned out these books. Now, if you're wondering why I reviewed so many books that I haven't read, well, come on, I'm using them as prop stacks. Why would they be here? Yeah. They're pretty much either books that I've grown out of, books I haven't read, or books with conservative biases or overly moralistic tales for young children. Okay, thanks for sitting through that.